Greetings once again. Here we are in our uh, Sabbath Saturday or Shabbat Shalom. And we just want to take our time to honor Him on this mighty, wonderful day that He has made. And there's wonders to be fulfilled in your life and mine. I am uh, Menechem, yeah, that's my Hebrew name. And I just want to respond to you viewers and listeners and let you know, take a piece of paper, get a pen or pencil to write some notes or things that inspire you as we are uh, informing you with uh, instructions that become revelation, that become realization, glorification, manifestation, all the terms that you've heard. And one of the greatest things that we need is the love of the Father. Uh, the Father in Scripture, He introduced His Son to us through the word in Genesis 1 the third word in the beginning Bereshit, uh, the et in the Hebrew is father and son so there's a father son relationship all through scripture that you and I need to be aware of for some reason or another we use principles but we don't understand the father's order we don't understand what does order actually mean you know so uh, I thought we'd kind of share on that today because there's a lot of transition. Uh, one of my uh, uh, peer ministers that are, is, was a son or is a son to me, we uh, initiated him, activated him, placed the mantle of apostolic insight on his life and he brought a tremendous word up in Adelanto uh, under uh, Pastor uh, Abel and Heidi Russo and we had a powerful, powerful time. Sure there wasn't no numbers and numbers are not based on how many. Numbers are based on fruit that remain. And according to scripture he said if you will endure till the end you shall be saved. Well the end of what? <laughs> it's the end of the process. The end of the father-son relationship that becomes uh, engrafted into you, internalize the scripture. So we want to greet you. Let's pray real quick and then we'll get started. Uh, if you have uh, a moment, turn your Bibles to Ezekiel 43 and we're going to start in verse uh, 10 and 11. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. Thank you that every listener has ears to hear and eyes to see. Open up the eyes of our understanding that we may understand the revelation that you have for us according to the word. The word in Ephesians chapter 1, and we thank you again for, and this is how you placed it there, Father, so we want to honor you that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the esteem of his inheritance is in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power and that word mighty power is energeo so you have deutimus exousia and then energeo and why well it goes from your head to your heart to your feet so you've got to walk out the father and son principles in this hour so turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 10. Thank you that the kingdom is enlarging, the kingdom is expanding now to the listeners, to the viewers. And may you, Father, shine your light upon us because you are light, life, and love. Without light and life, we can't experience love. We can preach it, but without having that revelation, listen to me closely, you can have information, revelation but without a relationship to those two encounters you produce imitation and a lot of apostles in this hour that are trying to move into new wine and new wineskins are preaching imitation 
they got all the cliches, but if you look at the children, if you look at the babes, if you look at the young men, they're still drinking milk. They haven't had bread or meat. And according to 1 John, when he speaks to the children, the young men and fathers, he has a different order for each manifestation of the word in and through a people. So who are you at this time in your life? Where are you on your journey? Are you ascending by revelation knowledge that you would be made complete in him? Complete meaning mature. Per, you know, perfect is the King James liter, literal terminology, but in Hebrew it's mature. So a pater is a mature man, not one that blows his cap, not one that is short, but one that has great long suffering, epic ganasco, and then you have ganasco, and then you have idio. Those are three realms of knowledge that come to you as you walk in your perception of the word working in you. And you have to have, just like faith, faith is a Greek term pistos or pistios, and it means confident, <laughs> confident person, confidence, confident person. See, it's break down in threes. Why? Because everything in Scripture lays on the tabernacle teaching of the pattern. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. There are three. They are ekhad. They are one. We don't uh, segregate them and give them their own ministry. They're one in the same. The Son was the Father, and the Father was the Son. The Spirit bore witness to both being one. <laughs> That's why the Son said, I can't do anything without the Father. And the Father said, I sent the Son to manifest those things that I wanted to manifest. Do you see? Because He's a Spirit. So He took on the realm of flesh. He incarnated the Word into Himself. Why? Because He was the Word become flesh. We're flesh becoming the Word. So this is why it's so powerful that you would see these things and that we want you to understand them. So turn with me to Ezekiel chapter, hallelujah, 43, okay? Verse 10. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. One, pattern, okay? Just bear with me. The word pattern is there. And that's a note of requirement. The pattern is a requirement. When you break it down, it leads you to requirement. It's required of all teachers, hallelujah, to teach the tabernacle foundational principles. Then verse 11 says, And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house. Oh, first you had the measure of the pattern. Then you had the form of the house. So you've got to lay forms just like a contract. He comes in, he measures the dirt, he excavates, and then they start laying wood to, yeah, to build the form where the house is going to lay on top. Without the proper foundation, you have no house, okay? And then he goes right in there, he says, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the goings out thereof and the comings in thereof and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinance thereof, and do them. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof, round about, shall be most holy. So he's talking about a house that is built is going to be the after effects of obeying the fashion, the pattern, and the form produces most holy. That's what it says in verse 12. Of course, you can say, well, that's italicized, okay? So let's remove that. Uh, it's a roundabout, behold, this is the law of the house. So if you remove that for you to understand if you're building the house where he's going to inhabit, not visit. See, most of us is, have our houses... Uh, <laughs> This is why my wife and I used to clean the house because we were going to have company. But see, now that we understand the company that comes, we want them to stay, relax, and be themselves. So it's a habitation. We prepare the habitation of the Spirit. So when people come to our home, they sense and speak of, wow, there's great peace in your home. See, they're saying it from out of their mouth they're, they're, because we've learned how to, yeah, 
follow the pattern, the form and the fashion of the house. Okay, and since that is part of the truth of the scripture, I want, to, I want you to understand how we're going into this place of order. The order of Yahuwah is always determined by his scriptures. I know you don't like that, but if you can live by the scripture, you'll always have the right format for the listeners. The order of Yahuwah is always determined by his scriptures. If we see that he sets in the Ecclesia first apostles, then that's the order. Now watch this. When you get into the ministry, the set ministry after after the order of 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it says, and he set first. The word set is the one that I want. I was telling Josh, please look up the word order and ordain, but he looked up the word set, S-E-T. I'm going to have him as he goes back because he's, you know, he's following me, but he's got to go back, catch the word set, and then he'll read it so we can get it on the tape. I have my computer here, but I didn't turn it on. I, I was uh, studying something else from a friend of mine, John uh, Flores, uh, and the teaching he did up in Adelanto. Go ahead, Josh, read the, the term for set. set. For set, it is uh, tithemi. It means to set, put, place, to lay or put down, means to establish, to set forth, and ordain. <laughs> the Greek lexicon number for that, for everyone to take a look to, yeah. is 5087. Once again, that is Strong's number 5087. I'll write that down on the lower third for everyone Amen. to see. So if you want to look it up and be a Berean and research out of matter, That's good, as it Josh. says in Proverbs 25 2, you're a king, it's your search sovereignty, it search it out. Yep. And let me give you the reference points why we're using that verse to bring and establish the word. The scripture says, out of the mouth of two or three, let all things be established. So here's the first. Uh, indication and God has said King James uses the term God I like to uh, address uh, my Heavenly Father with his name Yahuwah so and Yahuwah has set some in the church that word church there is Ecclesia when you study the word church the word church there means circus so you don't want to be set in a circus you want to be set in the Ecclesia this is why, as apostles, we need to study every facet, every phrase of Scripture so that when we're in, uh, injecting the sperma, which Peter talks about the word is the sperma, it births after the same image and likeness of Genesis 1, where he said, let us, let us, there's that word, let us, set let us make man in our image and likeness. See, he set us to become like him in his image and likeness. So here's the whole verse. And Yah and Yahuwah has set some in the Ecclesia, first apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Huh? Are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, covet earnestly the best gift, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And see, the more excellent way, when you study the word excellent, it ties in with Proverbs. Let's go over to Proverbs 20. Uh, in the Old Testament, you can... Uh, catch Proverbs chapter 20 hallelujah and we'll see we'll see for what it is uh, chapter 22 verse 20 I'm sorry I thought it was 2022 20, but it's actually Proverbs 22 verse 20 have I not written to thee excellent things and counsel and knowledge when you break down that word excellent things it's actually three cord a three stranded cord three three and one. The word excellent is three. So he's saying, have I not taught you a three-stranded cord that cannot be broken? So in Proverbs, he lines up Paul the Apostle who wrote, I mean, who wrote the New Covenant, Ber Hadashah. He uh, wrote that, but he was inspired by the Spirit. And you remember in, in John, 
and we're not going to turn there, but you remember in John, he was given to bear witness of him and to teach and bring back to our remembrance the things that he taught us. So <laughs> here in, in uh, chapter 12, at the very last verse, 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. What he was showing through scripture, through Paul, when he used the apostle, prophet, teacher, the three, is how to set the pattern, the form, and the fashion of the house. The reason why we're struggling and we have an immature church, and that's the, the, <laughs> that's the term in Malachi, I will curse the earth, He's talking about immaturity, and that's why we're cursed with immaturity. Why? Because we're not recovering the generational blessing or the generational baruch, as we prefer to put it in Hebrew, because the word blessing is a pagan terminology. If you study it, you see it. But see, most of us want to study what we know and not allow to be taught by the Spirit, especially when you hear someone like me bringing out Hebrew terms. All these Hebrew terms, they're just icons. They're, they're like the computer has a bunch of little icons and pictures and stuff, and you hit it and it takes you over here, and then you hit that one, it takes you over there. It, but it's leading you somewhere. It's leading you to search out till you find the truth that bears witness on the inside. So let's continue. Now, uh, Josh read it. It had order in it. It had ordained. It had to establish, to decree all these terms. Now watch. Apostolic order and ministry is set and ordained by Yahuwah. Regardless of what man thinks or believes, this type of ministry has been set and ordained by Yahuwah's appointed order. Okay, what am I talking about order? Well, order is important, but that comes that's part of the pattern. If you follow the pattern, you can't help to yourself, but you will study the word order. Because in the word order, you'll find pattern. So here, let's read a little bit more. Apostolic ministry is fruitful. John 15, 6. Okay, if you turn there to John 15 and 6. John 15 and 6. Let's go over there. You're, you're going to see how to produce fruit. 15, hallelujah. 15, 16, okay? Oh, Here it is. 16, I'm sorry. I probably said stop that halfway. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Do you see that? The fruit that you and I have, see, you think it's numbers. It's not numbers. You could have one son that is taking on the very nature, come on now, character and function. Why do I use those three terminology words? Because those words are, they strike and ignite a truth within you. The very nature of your heavenly father is flowing in you. You want to flow like your father, then you have to have his nature. That's why we use the term born from above, not born again. Born again is a Catholicism terminology, and you have to hear it for what it is. Born from above, you're bearing witness that you receive the one that is in the heavens. That's why we pray, oh Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, wait a minute, he left heaven to come into earth and live inside earth. So now when we read it this way, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that you love one another. You can't even love. <laughs> Listen to me. We read it in 1 Corinthians 12. That you should earnestly seek after the more excellent way. The, the way of love comes through three encounters with the Father. Yeah, uh, unless you are born from above, spirit-led, spirit-bred, or quickened by the Spirit, you can't. There's no way that you can involve yourself in what Ahava is. Not agape. We call it agape, but... See, you, that's why you got to study the Hebrew. 
I'm not telling you to become Hebrew. I'm not telling you to become a Judaizer or Orthodox. I'm telling you just to study the Hebrew. Why? The Hebrew is the root to the fruit that will remain. <laughs> the root, yeah. You'll know a tree by their fruit. That's what he said. If you remember what he's he ascribed in the hearts of his people. If you're a true disciple, then you'll move in that arena. Okay, let's read on. The word first, hallelujah. <laughs> let's go back to Corinth. I am so sorry. We got to go back to Corinth and and see the, the things that he placed. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28. And Yah has said, I'm using Yah because that's the same name the Father and the Son have. They have that name in their name. Yahuwah and Yahshua. See, the Father is Yahuwah. What's interesting, some of you that know how to study, you'll find that a lot of the prophets had the Y-A-H or the E-L in their name. Why? Because they bore witness of the one that formed them in his image and likeness. See, today we're not even, ref we're not reforming that truth. So that we're not really instilling in a man, in a woman, in a family, the very reformation of first things first. That's why here at House to House DI, house number two, house or H2, number two, H, D, I, capital D, capital I. What's that mean? I'm glad you asked. House to House Discipleship Institute. When we're doing this to bring and to strike a chord in you, to challenge you to see there's more in the scripture that you and I have learned. I know apostles, uh, I've been with them, I've, I've stayed quiet because what I carry is a mandate from my father and I thought I was part of a mandated fellowship but we were still traveling in the Jesus foundational terms, which is all fine and dandy when you first are born again and come into spiritual awareness. Like a baby when he's, I da da boo da da, and then the first, oh honey, he said da da. And you hear him, you hear that baby, I da da, abba da da, abba da da. You hear the abba and then the da da, daddy. Okay, so here you are beginning to learn as you grow older. I know it's tough when we simplify it because even the babes, according to scripture, he says through the mouth of babes, he'll perfect praise. Yeah, that's a powerful revelation when you understand that you yourself are going to perfect praise. Okay, so now back to Corinth where he uses the word first. The word first is proton, first in time. First in place, first in order, first in importance. Before at the beginning, we must lay the foundation of order or, hallelujah, here's another good word, or the law. L-A-W. But see, you think the law from a, how can I put it, from a carnal bondage posture. I'm thinking law from a spiritual heavenly posture. See, when you think of the law, you think you're free so you can eat pork. But you know what? I'm telling you, I bet you had ham at your Thanksgiving meal. <gasps> oh my, yeah. And you still like that bacon and then you wonder why you're going through things and why you have pain in your bodies and on the inside because you ate too much pork. Not a few days ago. You've been eating it because you are the, you're of the type that believes you can eat anything because the Father said, don't call curse what I have sanctified. See, and you read that out of context. When Peter had that revelation of the sheep coming down and animals on it, those were <laughs> types and shadow of nations, of language, of kindred and tongues. They were not referring to, even though in your uh, maturity you interpret it as you can eat anything but that's not he was what he was uh, referring to he was referring to the dietary law that you should not eat those things why do you think he casted demons into the swine you know and here you're trying to justify and eat pig or swine chancho <laughs> in Spanish means dirty chancho my mom used to say, ay, chancho, vete a bañar. 
means I little dirt ball go shower and so these things were true to hear and they're true to learn so here again let's go back to uh, our text and uh, first proton first in time first in place first in order and first in importance so the father in the beginning Bershit he had his his name and the son's name in that verse in that word because he was showing how important in time in rank in order and importance the father-son relationship all through scripture connects you and that's what allows you to recover the generational blessing the inheritance that has been passed down from father to son all the prophets had the father's name in their name yeah, yeah, I know it's hard, but go get an older version of a Bible and you'll see their name, the Y-A-H in their name. Or you'll have a study Bible and go to the you know bookstore and look at it and you'll find one and you'll see, oh, they're, why? Because they're a Reformation type of translation because they're keeping the scripture true to when it was transliterated from Latin to Hebrew to Greek to yeah English and all the other languages from then. But here we go. Let's let me read again. Uh, the law of first things first. This law recognizes Yahuwah's order in all things. When Yah says first, he means first. See, we try to make it secondary, but remember in Ezekiel um, 43, 10, and 11, he talks about the pattern, the form, and the fashion. Why you can't, fa you, you know, we have designers that have fashion clothes lines for people. Some are very elegant and colorful, and others are uh, very moderate and basic, but it's a color fashion with color professionals wear dark suits men and women and those that want to stand out more may buy a colorful outfit to wear whether it's male or female but in all in all there's a strategy to even fashion in the order of the world if you would carry over the fashion of the kingdom into the world around you you change the atmosphere of those that are around you in the flesh. You remain spirit and they begin to hunger after the spirit. They'll hang around you, go to lunch, take you to lunch and ask questions. Why? Because there's something on the inside of you that is bearing witness to something in seed form on the inside of them. Try it sometime, you'll be uh, Baruch. Okay, let's read on. We overlook the order of first things because we have either one, not been taught it, two, did not see it clearly in the word, or three, simply we reject it because it means we must get in order ourselves. And we don't want that. Mark chapter 7. Let's read Mark 7. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mark chapter 7. Let's see what that unfolds for us. Mark chapter 7. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for Mark chapter 7, verse 13. Making the word of Yah of none effect through your traditions which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If a man have ears to hear, let him hear. My goodness, if you're listening to what he's saying. See, most of us study the scripture and then let we spew out <laughs> out of orderness because you don't understand the order of scripture. You haven't studied the scripture and allowed the spirit to speak to you. See, we talk about those principles, but if you hear someone that starts teaching things that you're not accustomed to, instead of you receiving and learning and beginning to fashion your spirit man, the hid man of the heart that the scripture speaks about, you reject it. 
Now, you sh you, there's times where you will learn to resist things until you have enough light of understanding. According to Proverbs, it said the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, and he's lighting the inward parts <laughs> yeah, of your spirit. As you get revelation, illumination comes, and then transformation, transfiguration, realization, and you get to the final yeah, glorification or the esteem of your Father. When you are carrying esteem, you're able to witness to others. While you're in process, sometimes you don't get a urge inside. Now you witness from the flesh, you witness from the soul. It's still all right, it's a witness. But when you have the true esteem of your Father, He quickens you around people, and when you speak, people wonder, well, have you been speaking to my husband, my wife, my mother, my father? Who you been talking to? How did you know that? It's the spirit that's in them bears witness with the spirit in you. And of course, the spirit of a man or woman is the candle of Yahuwah, according to the scripture. You ought to take heed to that because it'll help you as you continue to search out the truth. All right, let's go on. Let me uh, re uh, remember the third thing that we've seen. Uh, we overlook order of first things first is because we just simply reject it and don't want to change. <laughs> true apostolic ministry births, hallelujah, true apostolic ministry births the Mashiach in them, or King James uses the term Christ, okay? Ecclesia, so we need to recognize if we have birth into the order of Yah in our setting and lifestyle. Apostolic ministry births the Mashiach in you. Then the order flows by his impartation in your life. First things first, the law of Genesis. Everything has a beginning and reproduces it after its kind. If something begins wrong, usually it ends wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Did you catch that? If something begins wrong, usually it ends wrong. See, we could have all the revelation, but you got to have relationship. Now, relationship with apostles, you've got to have more than just uh, going to the show, going shopping, or serving the church, sweeping, vacuuming. That's not serving. See, it says in Isaiah, them that wait upon Yahuwah shall renew their strength. Okay, and so you're waiting on them. In the Hebrew, the term waiting is like a, uh -huh, like a servant bearing a towel over his hand to serve while he's waiting to renew his strength. Yeah, Josh is getting up to grab a towel to uh, help, help me to uh, show you but you know, you can see the picture. The imagery is you put a towel over. Hallelujah. You put a towel over and you serve each other. You serve. Nehemiah served the king. And why was it a towel? Because after he drank the wine, he would clean the wine off his beard. The beard of the king. I didn't talk about Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a servant. Even though he might have been old enough to grow a beard, he wasn't worried about Listen, cleaning the wine off the beard. Why? Because if it was poisonous, he died. That's a servant. He drank instead of the king drinking or eating first. He tasted the first, the food, before he distributed it to the king and the queen. That's them that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. This is why we have to have order in, <laughs> yeah. Because the order, as you build your sons and daughters, they know how to pray. They know how to set the setting around for those that come in. Do you know that you don't have to ask people to leave that aren't in order? The ones that don't have an order, they'll leave. If they want to submit to the order, they remain. Why? Because those are fruit that will remain <laughs> as they go through process. My goodness, I'm telling you, you'll know their tree by their fruit. Okay, let's read on. First things first, the law of Genesis, we went over that. Everything has a beginning and reproduces after its kind. If something, if something begins wrong, it usually ends wrong. If it starts right, it has a better chance of ending right. 
So let's begin to alter and change the things that we have in the father-son relationship as restorers of truth, reformers of the name. See, when I use the term reform, I'm trying to reform the name. Reform the name in you. Because once you get a real truth of the term God and the term Lord and study it to show yourself approved, the word Lord will lead you, lead you to Baal, Baal. The word God is just, it's, yeah, it's, my goodness. It's evident that the word God is descriptive because all through scripture where they named, especially in the old covenant, where they named all leaders, they called them gods. Did you know Egypt had many gods? Oh, and today, today, watch this. Today in modern 21st century, new millennial, if you go to India, they got, India, they got over 2 million gods. 2 million! How can you even come to how can you come to grips with that and have the ability to name, listen to me closely, to name every statuette or every graven image and give it a personal name? Do you know how that's done? Because the first Adam that the father told Adam in scripture, he gave him the ability to name things and today we still have that Adam nature in mankind and they're naming things. And that's why there's over 2 million gods in India. And that's in the modern American lifestyle. So you and I, that's our job. We are to get rid of the first Adam and take on Adama, the last Adam, the last Adam that had been quickened and raised from the sleep or dead. Let's go on. Hallelujah. First in rank, the word rank in Webster's Dictionary defines it like this. Define it as a degree or position of dignity, eminence, excellence, a grade of official standing. We are all equal in Mashiach as to salvation, but there are different ranks in the spirit, different degrees of authority and power. You didn't catch that, huh? Let me read that again. We are all equal in Mashiach, in, well, some of you call him Jesus Christ. We're all equal in Jesus Christ as to salvation. But there are different ranks in the spirit, different degrees of authority and power. Remember the word first is chiefly. This means according to the highest rank or office of greatest importance, significance, influence, rank in military. Yah's army has a rank. Rank is, is the realm of the spirit. Ephesians 6, 12. Ephesians 6, 12. Evil spirits recognize spiritual ranks. <laughs> Every believer has a rank to cast out devils. Amen. There is a rank in the Godhead or in the Yah head. Okay? There is a rank among angels. There's a rank in the spirit realm. All authority has power and it is based upon their rank. We must be able to receive, walk in, and discern different rankings in the spirit. Men, women, children, Yeshua's elders, Yeshua, elders, deacons, saints, Apostles walk and minister in the highest rank here on earth. <laughs> yeah. Apostles walk and minister in the highest rank here on earth. Evil spirits and angels must recognize and respect their rank. Apostles carry rank in the spirit to commend, decree, and rebuke with authority. Colossians chapter 2, 9 through 15. I know you needed a verse, so I thought I'd give you one. Okay, apostolic ranks are within their sphere of influence, their sphere of authority. They have areas they have been assigned to by Yahuwah. If they walk in these areas, they produce fruit that will remain. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 through 18. Okay, we just got a little bit more time, so hold on. By submission to the order in Yeshua, they begin to pioneer areas of Yahuwah for us to walk in. My, my, my. 
to pioneer in, to open or prepare for others to follow, one of the first to settle in the territory, we become stagnant as a church believer. Without apostolic pioneering being imparted to us, we become a follower, not a disciple. Mm. Disciples don't follow. They pick up their cross. That's the following part. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. He didn't say, come and follow me. You catch that? Come and follow me. That's what we're doing. That's why our churches are, we call anointed uh, praise and wor worship where it's, there's no anointing. Do you know why people aren't changed in our ministries? Because they haven't really been immersed to the promise of the Father. Hallelujah. Remember, pioneering with apostolic authority will cause you to take authority over that region, that realm that you've been called to, to submit to an apostle. I'm telling you for sure, I fight the enemy every night, but he can't fight me. You didn't catch it. What do you mean? I stay under the covering of my apostolic authority that has been given to me by the Father. Within that framework, within that pattern, within that fashion, within that form, I am completely covered and kept be touched. That's like an emissary from another country. I come to the United States and they gotta let me through. They can't search me, they can't touch me. Now when I break, when I break ranking, believe me, all kinds of chaos begins to, to happen. That's why confusion and chaos is not of the Father. Apostles as pioneers carried by His function and ability to invade new areas of revelation. They cause progression in your life and not degression. See, you think you're taking up the land. I haven't seen one church take up the land and win their city. <laughs> Thank you. See, I know it's tough on your souls, but I have not seen one church with a mandate to take their city. If that was true, then the Father would be initiating every apostolic leader in a city to take that city. You can't even take the people that come new into your church building. So how are you going to take a city? A city is made up of believers. The New Jerusalem, the city that is descending from above is a revelation. It's a sphere of influence to those people that become immersed in the Father's promise. Let me finish. The ability to invade new areas of revelation, they cause progression in your life, not degression. They can help bring you into the fullness of the Yahed bodily, Colossians 3, 16, Colossians 2, 18 and 19. Apostles have a breakthrough anointing. Apostles have a breakthrough anointing. Let me say it again as we end. Apostles, Sheliacs, have a breakthrough anointing. Breakthrough of the what? We ain't breaking through no principalities and powers. We're breaking through the veil of misunderstanding and the veil of limitations and moving into the very sphere of kingdom release and kingdom invasion in vision you have to have the vision on the inside until we see each other again remember sheliac apostolic ranking order breaks through with the anointing to break through into another sphere of influence that will open up the heavens to the saints that have been given to you as stewards. You're not their owner. You can't tell them what to do. You can only counsel them through revelation knowledge until we see each other again. I pray that you learned something this morning and this afternoon and this evening. Spread it around, tell a friend, hit the subscribe button until we see each other again. Shalom.
Let's not get hurt. You know what we're called to do? Yes, to bring an anointing.